body had a couple days removed. What did you learn? What did you take from the start? Yeah, obviously there was a lot to learn and, you know, experience was the biggest thing for me. Um, getting out there, you know, seeing the speed of the game, getting the communication going. Um, and then also the patience that, you know, along with this great line that I have, that, you know, it gives me the time to, to be able to sit there and trust them and let things develop. Um, you know, where I thought that, you know, you look back on film where um, I'll drop back in the pocket and, and sometimes I would start hitching up and get antsy to get rid of the ball when in reality, um, I probably had a little bit more time back there to, uh, to take a second and let the pitcher develop. Um, so that'll be something that, you know, I continue to work on. Um, but like I said, you know, just the experience of being out there was, um, you know, big enough of, of an experience and learning experience that you could have. You, you just mentioned, obviously, maybe a little bit more patience. But was that something you sensed in the moment in the first half? Like, were you trusting things enough or... Yeah, I would say I still trusted it, but I mean, it all comes down to feel. Um, everything goes down to do something for the first time, whether you're using a camera, stand on a ladder, um, you're going to be a little hesitant at it at first. Um, so, um, you know, whatever you got to do to be able to, to feel comfortable and, uh, you know, however that may come, you have to do. Coach Rogano's been, Coach Rogano's been in basically the same situation you're in. How has he used his experience to help you navigate all this? Yeah, I know, like you guys said, uh, Coach TJ uh, was kind of in the same situation. So, um, you know, I've talked to both of those guys a lot since the time I've been here. Um, and, you know, like Coach Ragon said, Coach Rag says all the time, you know, he wants to give us all the tips and tricks and tools um, that got him out of the league to keep us in the league. Um, so whether that's from your drop, your preparation, your film work, whatever it may be, um, you know, those are the things that, that we take into consideration, obviously, when going into preparation and everything that we do to help us better ourselves. Is there anything that he's told you from his experience that's really resonated with you? Yeah, other than just go out there and play, don't run slow. I know he was a little slower on the <laughs> running side. Uh, so, you know, just just be faster than him. Um, but, no, just go out there and play ball, play your game. Uh, don't ever try to be someone you're not or something you're not, uh, which is what he, you know, harps on us all the time, especially right there around game day. Uh, just go out there and let it fly. Do you appreciate that he's willing to sort of open that vein up to help you guys? Because that can't, that can't be easy necessarily for him to relive that. Yeah. No, definitely, for sure. For some people, um, you know, sometimes their time in the league, unfortunately, is cut short. Um, and sometimes they do come back into coaching. And, uh, you know, for some people that, you know, they might not like the league. And then some people, they want to better and help others. Um, so to have a, a guy like Coach Rags to, you know, and, and TJ to help us, you know, understand of, of what they did wrong and, and where they went wrong in their career to help us stay in it, um, you know, I can be all but thankful for that. What was one thing maybe that surprised you uh, about your first start? Just, I don't know, was it a pace or something from that game that you kind of just weren't expecting or was different compared to college? Mm, I mean, you know, the, there's, there's not much different other than the speed of the game, and obviously things happen a lot faster. Um, at, at the end of the day, you put the football down, it, it's still pigskin, it's still leather, it's still 11 on 11. Um, schemes might be a little different, people might be a little bigger, faster, taller, stronger. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just football and just going out there and play. Like I talked about earlier in the week, you know, as long as you're prepared and whatever you're doing, um, you know, I, I think you're going to be good. You mentioned the comfortability that you were trying to find. Um, did having the run game really help you kind of get in that mode? And will it help you more going forward? Yeah, I think you guys asked me that question last week. You know, just having a good run game, you know, help a rookie quarterback and staying comfortable. And of course, um, and I think, you know, with whether you're a rookie quarterback or any quarterback, getting in the rhythm and getting them a flow, and not even for the quarterback, for the whole offense and team um, is crucial for us. And so staying in the flow, staying in the rhythm, whether that's helping with a run game, whether that's putting in a screen, um, a shot, doesn't matter. Just keeping the ball moving forward. Um, that's something Coach Art and I talk about all the time is just, you know, no matter what the play is, just try to keep moving forward. Just get up on the ball and move forward. Seeing Tyler have the game he had, I mean, that's one of your rookie class mates. What was that like for you to watch him do that? Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, that's one of my buddies since, you know, we came in. We're, we've grown real tight to each other. Um, I just saw him, you know, he kind of ran a little far off to the to nowhere when he scored uh, on, his, on his first one. I was like, Ty, where are you going? Like, let's celebrate. Because that was, my, that was my first time I'd seen anyone in the end zone on the field. So I was trying to celebrate with him. <laughs> so what would you say, though, really is the key to maybe getting that passing game yeah, that's just being comfortable and trusting what you see. Um, you know, the, the shots and everything is going to come when, you know, when it's there and everything. Um, but just being comfortable within the pocket, you know, trusting that those guys are going to give you enough time to let the play develop. Um, and, and that those guys on the back end are going to win their routes, win their matchups, and, and go to work. Did you 
Did you feel a difference in the pocket? Because Coach Smith talked about in college maybe that the pockets are kind of a little bit cleaner um, just because the guys are really able to, to hold the guys. Whereas in, in the NFL, there's some guy coming at you at some point, no matter what. Did you feel a difference? Um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, it might be a little vice versa. I didn't have a, you know, I had a respect my O-line back in Cincinnati. I love all them boys from all my years. Um, but I definitely didn't have an Alabama O-line in Cincinnati. Um, so, you know, why I said that, I, you know, I think I might have sped up a little bit more in, in this game and wanted to get to the next read and wanted to get to the hitch up was because, you know, I felt like in, you know, the past couple of years I've been, whether it's like one read and one A and then you're out. Um, where now, you know, like I said, I have a great old line who's, who's able to um, be back there and give me enough time to where I can just be comfortable and, and let things develop and let things play out. What are some of the things you see when you're looking at the Ravens' defense? Yeah, um, you know, they're big up front, big and long up front, and, and they rotate in the linebackers pretty well. Um, and then their DBs are, are long and lengthy and, and like to stick on guys. Um, so, you know, we just really have to go out there and, and play our game and, and just play smash mouth football. How does Roquan play for the middle linebacker? Yeah, good. Like I said, he, he's a long, lanky player, likes to fill the gaps, shoot through the A gaps. Um, I, I know our guys up front are going to have, you know, a good time with him. Um, and then, you know, when our backs get matched up on him, you know, I like our backs over anyone. So, um, you know, I'm excited to get out there and play on, on Saturday. Um, and obviously, you know, it's the second game, so uh, second team I could see live. This might sound a little weird, but I know I've watched in practice, it seems like you, like, duck your head down for, like, a half second. Like, do you know you do that? Like, is that? You're talking, like, right before, yeah. like, when we're in the huddle? Like, no, like, when you, like, drop back, it looks like when you were, like, like, I think it was like, oh, yeah. Through the, like, yeah, when I, go through, when I go through my progression, so when we're out here in these, um, whether it's a walkthrough or jog through days, um, just going through my progressions. And, and I'm not going to say it started in fall camp, but, um, you know, it's just, you know, to let myself know and then ultimately, you know, to let the coaches know that, boom, this is where I'm going to go with the ball. Okay, boom, I'm going to progress, progress, progress. Boom, that's where I'm going with the ball. Um, so that's just kind of in my head how I work through my progressions. Um, when we do have a progression read and, you know, just let them know that those guys see it too because, you know, all those guys in there, whether offense or defense, they make fun of me for it because um, I've done it since the day I got here. So they'll make fun of me, um, but I just keep continuing to do it just to help with my, you know, mental reads. So that's just a practicing for you. That's yeah, it's just a practice. It's just like, it's just like no different than if I were going to throw it, you know, in practice. Instead of me throwing it, I'm just letting them know it's coming. You mentioned the time in the pocket, how that was kind of, an adjustment for you this week. Do you feel like it's going to be a natural progression to be in those situations a little bit better just because now you're like, okay, now I kind of know what I'm facing in a game situation? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, nothing's going to be natural and everything's got to come with reps and, and practice and all. And then again, we're playing a different team. You know, it could be obviously a completely different up four front, three, four front, um, and completely different players. So, um, you know, they could be, you know, way better than the Saints or, you know, they could be way worse. It doesn't matter how it is. You know, you're getting new people. Um, every single week, so you kind of just have to adjust on the fly. Um, but just in the back of your head, you know, hey, just be comfortable back here. You don't have to rush. Um, those guys got you. Just play your game. They're going to play their game, and everything's going to be good. Did you have any bad weather games at Cincinnati? Kind of like what could be this weekend? Yeah, there were a couple bad weather games. Um, I, th I think the worst one was uh, Temple in 2019, I want to say, uh, which was about 32 sleeting. Uh, you know, I know the weather's supposed to be cold for this week, um, but at the end of the day, you can't. That's what we can't control, and uh, what we want to do is just control what we can control. Are you the type of player that wants to, to fix everything, like, at, like this week, or do you kind of pick one or two things that you really try to focus on and fix? Yeah, if you try to fix a, if you try to fix a lot of things, you're going to fix a little. You know, if you try to fix, you know, little things, you're going to fix a lot. Um, so, you know, that's one thing, just holding on, like I said. Uh, the main things for me were just, you know, being comfortable in that pocket, um, you know, just going out there and just and being comfortable and making the plays when plays are there for me. What are your conversations with Coach Rags like on the sidelines? What were they like? Is he is he coming to you and saying, I see this and this? Or are you going to him and asking questions? How does that? A little bit of both. And, you know, that's what last week was. It was a test trial. That was right. the first time since, uh, you know, preseason that we had been in conversation with each other on the bench. Um, other than that, you know, it was him and Marcus. And him and Marcus had one way of doing it. And, and then, you know, we have another. Um, and, you know, it might not be too much different than what him and Marcus did. Um, but, you know, it, all it is is just going over, looking at the pitchers, seeing what we see, um, just making sure we're on the same page, that if anything pops back up again later in the game, um, that we're ready for it. Did you hear from him at all? From Marcus? Yeah. Yeah. He just told me, you know, he told me, he told me good, uh, good luck on the game before and everything, you know, best wishes, and then after, um, just keep slinging it, you know. Um, obviously, it wasn't the result that we wanted to um, have as a team. 
Um, but, and, you know, you knew it was my first start, obviously. But, um, you know, like I said at the beginning when I first got here, uh, you know, Marcus is like a big bro to me, and, you know, that's how he's kept it. Did he text you or did he call you? He texted me. Yeah. Drake told me that you guys have a secret Santa thing going on between the rooms, and in the receiver room, the minimum is like $500. Do you guys have that going on in the quarterback room? And what's kind of, well, I guess there's like two. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not a secret. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, it wouldn't be so much of a secret. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Rags and London are pressing hard for some gifts. Um, you know, me and Marcus obviously, you know, didn't really talk about it, and then, uh, you know, me and Logan haven't talked about it much. But uh, you know, we got to take care of the big guys up front. Um, and then apparently, Coach London and uh, Coach Rags want a little something on top too. So we'll have to see what we can do for them. Wait. So all right. Like, this would not have fallen on you two weeks ago. No, I was still buying all the line sure. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> as, as, you know, the leader I am and the quarterback, um, I was just gonna go ahead and get them all stuff. So, so does it change? Does it change the gift now that you're the starting quarterback? Oh uh, no, no, it doesn't change the okay. gift because the, the bank account getting changed from, <laughs> from two weeks ago to now, so uh, uh, it's gonna stay the same for a little while. So, what kind of gift are you like? A practical one? Are you a flashy one? I try to think about what they will want and what they would, you know, kind of like, and not just, you know, be like, oh, thank you. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, hopefully, you know, actually, it's my first year, so. Uh, you know, hopefully I'll do it. I'll get a couple OKs and a couple, hey, thanks, Dad. And, you know, we'll keep it at that and chalk it up for next year. Um, but we'll see. Is this your first Christmas as a dad or no? Have you had a Christmas? Second Christmas. Second, second Christmas, Christmas okay. yeah. So. Was it, is it special playing on Christmas Eve? Are you happy you get to come make it back? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely happy I get to come home. My wife was like, do you want us to come to the game? And I was like, no, I want to wake up to you guys on Christmas and we can open presents because, uh, you know, they were at the game last week, and I flew home, and they didn't fly back till uh, Monday. So I was at home all alone, didn't even have a dog, and it was a little weird for me. So uh, that's not how I want to spend my Christmas morning. Wait, where was that dog? Uh, dog sitting. <laughs> you didn't pick up the dog on the way home? Sometimes you can't. There's like a yeah, there's a time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't care about it.